Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 239 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Megan. Hey, what was your kid's hair looking like today? Oh, I am solo parenting this week. Not that, actually, that's like, (laughs) that's the worst excuse ever. Not like my co-parent brushes their hair or something, but it does mean our mornings have been a little more rushed. And so I would say presentable, nothing presentable, nothing to put on the Christmas card, but presentable enough. How about you? Um, I couldn't really say they well, they all walked out with hoods on today. So I'm just hoping for the best. Well, that's right. We just did our episode about winter gear and you, you have the hat and hood excuse for the next several months. So, well, exactly. And it really doesn't even matter what they do before they put the hat on. It's still going to get messed up by the hat. So I think I'm kind of like off. I'm like scot free as far as like um, hair, having responsibility for anyone's hair for the next few months. Yes. You, At you least that's a, what I'm telling myself. You get a free pass, except probably they shouldn't go out with wet hair, right? I hear that's a thing in the... Um, they shouldn't, but you know, with teenagers, who knows? That's true. They, so they, sometimes they just do. I think that's one of those old wives tales. Like, yes, if they walk out with wet hair and it's freezing, their hair will freeze, but they probably won't die. Right. <laughs> or catch their death of cold as... They would have said in an old timey book, right? Catch your death of cold. Um, well, if you can't tell everyone, we are talking about kids hair today. That is the topic of this entire episode, which is funny because it came about a few weeks ago. We did a more than mom episode about our own hair and we realized we have a lot to say about kids hair. And then it came up again in the episode we did recently about things we've changed our minds about, because I talked about completely changing my mind about how much I care about my girls wearing their hair up to school. And we had a whole discussion about that. So that's right. Yeah. We decided we had enough to say from baby all the way up to teen about the care and maintenance. That makes it sound like um, like a goldfish or something. Yes. Or like a Dr. Spock's book or something. Yes. The care and maintenance of our children's hair. I'm really excited for your part in this because I feel like with four teenage boys, you have, there have been many hills that I've run the gamut. (laughs) Yes. Many hills I could have died on (laughs) and only a few I've chosen to. (laughs) Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product. The algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh, minty essence in every bottle, so you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. 
No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan. I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. All right, well, let's start at the very beginning. I hear it's a very good place to start with babies and babies' first haircuts. Do you have any uh, memories that stick out of your five kids and a first haircut? Well, I mean, not surprisingly, my first gets dibs on memories, um, my (laughs) oldest. So Jacob was actually the only one of my kids, though, I'm almost 100 percent sure that actually got a haircut in his first year of life. He had a nice head of hair. I wouldn't say it was like really full or thick, but it just grew steadily. And by the time he was a year, like 11 months old is when he got his first haircut. He really needed a cut. It was very straight and it kind of grew his hair always grew sort of like down but also out okay because it was very thick like we used to call it like bristle brush hair Uh it was just it didn't quite it just didn't grow long nicely um and so when he was about 11 months old it was starting to get like those weird little like like uneven places that go in in by his ears and stuff so um took him for a haircut and it was one of those like kid it was like a special kid haircut place Mm -hmm. i can't remember the name of it now but it was like you you bring your kid in and they have like a little um horse he could sit on yes, a little car. you know and they yep. take an adorable picture and they gave me a, a clip of his hair which I still have in a baby book somewhere um and the rest of my kids all were sort of either bald kind of bald and mullety or like totally bald into their like Owen it was a little bald peanut into his <laughs> second year um Isaac had like this beautiful little head of little fuzzy ringlets that grew in very mullety, but didn't grow long until he was around 18 months or 20 months, something like that. And then Will's hair was very blonde and and puffy. Like we called him like a little duckling Uh because it was just like a little fluff. And Clara's just grew really nicely. So none of them had haircuts until they were probably two or or older. Yeah. And I don't remember any of them. It's like at that point, it all just mash. Right. It, it didn't into feel one like... general experience. But I will say none of my kids had a hard time getting their haircut. They were all totally calm. And even Isaac, the one who was, you know, my my more spirited child. Yes. Um, I remember being like so relieved that he, for whatever reason, was very calm and just super chill during yeah. his haircuts. So that was never it was never like a terrifying experience for me. Do you remember feeling sad about any of the first haircuts? Like I know um, for a lot well, of moms, it's a it's a like a poignant thing. Only Isaac's because he had just the most adorable little fuzzy head of curls. And I knew they wouldn't grow. I I knew once they were cut off, they wouldn't come back that way. And they didn't like that first head of curly baby ringlet hair um, was never to be. But like, and we'll get into this. We talk about toddler hair, but like it got so ridiculous that I it had to go. <laughs> I'm already we're like two minutes in and I already feel like I need to see pictures of all your babies again. I feel like I've seen pictures of all your kids at different ages, but now I want to go back and look at their little fuzzy heads because it is. Oh, and look like a little hockey player. <laughs> like he looked like like his hair looked like players. Look it like. was like what my brother would have wanted his hair to look like in 1987 mm-hmm. if he could have pulled it off. Like it was just a, an awesome curly mullet. That's really awesome. If he was in Stranger Things, he would have been um, Billy. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Little blonde Billy. I love it. 
Um, okay, well, all so my three were all different for first haircuts, and I have two girls and a boy, so that's part of it too. But um, Allegra was the most fearful, cautious, timid toddler about anything, anything, really. Like, she's the one who I've told stories. She was afraid of the things that other toddlers love, like Tickle right. Me Elmo and, like, everything. She was afraid of everything. So I did not even bother. She had great hair as a baby. It was really dark. She still has great hair. She has, like, amazing hair. Um, it was dark and full, and it grew out fairly normally, um, and it was long. She probably could have had a little haircut, like a cute little toddler bob earlier, but I waited until right around when she was two because I, I figured by then a, a little lollipop and the fancy chair at the little kid place. And she did well. But I remember because all the doctor's appointments, all things like that, that that second year of life between like 12 months and then till two was torture with her. I mean, every doctor's appointment, every any time any stranger had to even look at her was really intense. So I was like, we're not even bothering with a haircut. Um, and then around the time she was two, but she had a full ponytail by the time she was two. So it was a, wow. it was a haircut to kind of like trim off the the baby ends um, is mm-hmm. what I remember. And it, it transformed her from that like toddler. Cause when toddler hair grows out and we'll talk about this, it's not all the same length. So it's like a, right. a shaggy thing. And then it just transformed it into a little toddler haircut. And it was super cute. Reed, I did get his haircut right at 12 months. Um, I think it was totally for me. I think I was just excited to have a little boy. And have that little, because he had just wispy blonde hair. It was not Mm -hmm. in his eyes. It wasn't like, it was fine. But I just thought, oh, it'll look so cute if we just give him like a proper little boy haircut. And it did look so cute. But I think it was totally like, it was me wanting that milestone, not that he needed it. And then Violet had the slowest hair to grow. And I'll talk in a minute about her little rat tail situation. So I did, I lopped off myself when she was about maybe like over a year and a half. Um, cause we were in this house. So maybe like 20 months, I lopped off this little rat tail in the back. But other than that, she did not get a first haircut till she was almost three. Cause she didn't have anything to cut. She just didn't get length until she was almost three. So they were all different. And, and baby hair is so different in general. Like I know I have friends whose babies had crazy different, like ways their hair grew. Do you know, like some mm-hmm. babies are like bald in the back or, or it gets yeah. really long on top and keeps growing. And then there's this like undergrowth. So we didn't have a lot other than Violet's rat tail. We didn't have a lot of that going on. So the babies all just kind of had fuzzy little baby hair, but nothing too crazy. I think that mine, the, my, the two, it's funny how my kids tendencies tend to go in groups and Owen and Isaac had a lot of the same, just a lot of similarities as babies and toddlers. And one of their similarities was that they both had, although uh, Owen was more bald, but when their hair grew and it grew in super weird and okay. Owens was just straighter and he was balder for longer. But then when they grew in, it was like it grew in in tufts, like in the back, like <laughs> on either side of like the, you know, like I'm trying to do this with my hands. Like there's a spot where your spine like hits the back of your skull, right? Uh-huh, on yeah. either side of that, oh, okay. like that soft spot, <laughs> yeah. like this like puff of hair on both sides. But then the top wasn't really long enough to kind of meet it. Yeah. it. It was just. And so on, on <laughs> Isaac. It was, it looked better on Isaac for longer because his hair was thicker and curlier. Um, But when he was a toddler, I'm going to say he was 20 months old or so. He got ringworm. Um, I'm going to blame it on daycare because I'm going to say I just didn't have like ringworm on my hands or whatever, but who knows, whatever. He got a huge patch of ringworm on the back of his head and it just happened to be right in that balding spot. Okay. Where it wasn't like there wasn't enough hair to cover it. So I would comb his like, tufty mullet hair over <laughs> almost into like a duck tail in yes. the back to cover his ringworm because it was awful looking and he already looked a little weird to begin with because <laughs> of his hair so yeah no I definitely we definitely had that it just for us it just happened later and yeah. and with boys like I feel like boys often get a pass for having bad hair yeah. like people don't you either can just cut it all short, which I think is what I eventually ended up doing with Owen or right. with uh, Isaac. I just took him in. He ended up with this like kind of short cropped curly hair. Um, or you can just kind of let it go. And it's like, you know, you trim off the weird parts as you can. And I feel like there's more pressure for girls to have a style early, which yeah. is unfair. You yeah, know, it is unfair. Um, yeah. But like all of my boys, except for, well, J- Jake and Will had nice fine hair and Owen and, and Isaac just had kind of weird hair till they were well in after two. Um, well, first I have to address ringworm because in case people out there listening don't know, it is not an actual worm. 
ringworm is a right. fungus. I think, isn't it the same fungus as athlete's foot or something yes, like and that? It, yeah. It's a, and, and it, it literally li- grows in a circle. It's a perfect <laughs> circle. You'll know it when you see it because it's a perfect raised circle of rash. There's no worm involved, which it just has a terrible name um, because there's no parasite or worm. It, it's a fungus. It's a fungal infection and, and you have to get an antifungal cream, but it's right. like athlete's foot. It's not. And it looks gross. And then while it's being treated, it looks even grosser because it's shiny and it's all crusty with the ointment or cream that you have on it. It's just not a good look. No, you know? no. And it's especially real, it's, on your baby's head. It's real so. obvious what it is, too. We've, right. I think we've yes. only had it once or twice. And but one time it was on one of my kids cheeks. I, I don't I don't oh, remember gosh. if it was Violet or Reed, but it was on their face and it was small. But if you when you see that perfect circle, it's, it's only one thing. Um, yeah. But it is not an actual worm. So there you well, go. and I think it's funny, just a little aside, how some kids like get so um ringworm was just like a thing in our house for whatever reason when jake and isaac were little and and the other boys never had it like it just for whatever reason didn't afflict us with the with the younger kids um only one of my kids has ever had pink eye but they got it twice only one of my kids has ever been stung by a bee but they've been stung like three times like it's just weird how it kind of goes like certain kids for whatever reason like certain maladies oh i definitely uh reed is prone to skin issues. He's had impetigo, mm. which is another gro- gross, like skin infection. He's had like, yes. And so I, I do think kids are prone to certain things or like parts of their immune system just aren't as good at fighting well, off certain things. Maybe it's funny that you said that because now that I think about it, Isaac has dermographia, which is when like, if you, I think that's the correct word. Okay. If, and I didn't even know this was a thing. I just thought he was super sen- His skin was super sensitive. Yeah. And then one day a friend of mine, um, said, Oh no, I have that. And she's like, if you took your fingernail and scratched a word on your skin, someone with dermog- I think it's called dermography. It would puff up. Like oh, it doesn't yeah. just show like a, like the, like the mark, but it actually puffs uh-huh. up and gets red. So he's just got, a, and it's apparently a, like kind of like a hyperactive, um, almost like a, an allergy. Yeah. Almost. Like an, like an environmental allergy to everything. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, well that took us way off of hair. But interesting, it sure did. interesting nonetheless. Well, let's keep going with this growing out toddler hair. Um, I have a couple just personal stories, mostly with Violet. So uh, the rat tail was so funny when you were just talking about the, the back of the head and that weird spot. So this is related. Violet had an extreme has actually it's still there. You just don't see it because her hair is longer. An extreme cowlick at the base of her neck where instead of growing straight down, the hair swoops to the side and grows literally sideways. So it was kind of cute as a, as baby hair. Cause you could kind of see this pattern of like a swirl in the back and right at the base of her neck, it all swooped to the left. Well, as that grew for some reason, that like base of the neck just grew way longer than anything else. So she had <laughs> a true rat tail and not just, it was, I mean, it wasn't a mullet cause a mullet would have been all of the back hair kind of, evenly growing down. This was one center piece that would sort of curl off to the left. It was, it was, and it was long and she had no hair on the top of her head. I mean, practically bald, just little baby hair. So there was nothing else to fill it out. You couldn't like, you can't put it in a ponytail or something. So I did, um, I have a video and she's, we're in this house and we moved here when she was 18 months. So she was probably like 20 months and she was so wiggly. And I have this funny video of me trying to get her to hold still. And I just, clipped off the rat tail and I saved it as if it was like a first haircut. And then after that, her, she didn't have really much hair at all till she was about two and a half. And then it grew so pretty. It was so blonde, like that Mm. silky, like golden silk blonde and curls. Not, I knew she was not destined to have really curly hair because it was very fine baby curls. And just like Mm -hmm. you said with Isaac, I knew, I knew they weren't going to stay. And when it would be humid or we'd go to the beach, they'd pop up even more. And they were the kind of curls where her hair would go straight and fine and then ringlet at the bottom. Like it was mm. so pretty. And I just knew that that would never be yep. her hair. And if you looked at her hair today, it is pin straight. Yes, and it is. Uh, it's like a dirty blonde. She still gets like a, some natural highlights in the front, but it's not blonde anymore. I mean, it's a dirty blonde to light brown. And so probably of all my kids, the growing out was the the biggest transformation from bald and rat tail to then this. It's a period from when she's about three to four, four and a half. And then she started wearing it like in a short bob and it got thicker and darker and straighter. So it was just this like when I look at pictures, I'm like, oh, that hair. And it just was only with us for a little bit of time. 
You know, it's funny. And I don't remember if it was when I, if I saw her in real life with that hair ever, but I definitely remember feeling like a jarring thing when I saw Violet one, I mean, not any time recently, but like years ago when she didn't have the curly hair, because in my mind she had, she was like locked into my head as like a fuzzy curly headed little kid. Yeah. And then I said, I'm like, Oh my gosh, she looks so big without the curls. She looked so grown up. And that's sometimes I think what, the really jarring part is like when their grown up hair comes in, it really changes them. Yeah. Like their whole look. Yeah. yeah. And when you start doing those more big kid haircuts or on girls, yes. if you're doing a more like styled cut, um, yeah. it just does. It makes them look older. But that that was the most extreme of my kids because it was the length, the color and the texture all changed so much. Almost like it almost changed twice in the span of like right. three years. But I do look. I do look fondly back. I'll, I'll put a picture up somewhere on Instagram or in the show notes of the beachy waves. And they were so blonde. I was blonde as a kid too. And people look at Brian and I and they're like, oh, how did you guys get blonde kids? Because we're both brunette. But I was, I was medium blonde, like honey blonde, then dirty blonde. But I was definitely mm-hmm. fairer as a kid. And so I kind of, having blonde kids, I kind of felt like that was my, that was, came from my side of the family for sure. And now none of them are really reads. Reads was Reed was very blonde as a toddler, and just his has just been more gradual. Um, but nobody's really blonde anymore. Sad. Aww. Um. Well, we should talk about if you're ready. We should talk about maintenance and oh, washing yes. and uh, taking care of little kid hair. So we're still in the land of littles where we have yeah. to be involved. Um. Any tips? For- and I will say it, it. It's only been for me. Claire is almost 11. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's only been about a year for me that I've been completely uninvolved. Not even a year. Yes. I would say a year ago, I was still going in to check to make sure she was getting all the shampoo out of her hair. So yeah. this stage does last. I remember posting on while. our Facebook page for the mom hour years ago. I think Allegra was like seven, so maybe four years ago. Um, and saying, when, when are kids going to be able to do this independently? And I will say that my oldest kid was the latest. She wouldn't even shower independently until she was like, eight and a half. Like she was really old. And then my youngest came to that much sooner, but yeah, it's a long, a long time of at least supervising. So do you have any memories or tips from washing little kid hair? Oh my gosh. Well, just that depending on, and like I had many, they all had a very different, um, tolerance of having their hair washed. Yeah. And I kind of just had to figure out lots of workarounds, um, putting a dry washcloth over the eyes, tipping their head back just a little bit and using a cup. There were kids, there was at least one of mine who was so freaked out by having anything poured on their head that I just let them like, kind of like lay back in the bath and rinse in the dirty bath water. And I just kind of got over it because I thought, well, what I really want to do is like scrub their scalp and just kind of dislodge sand and stuff like that. And I'm not really that worried if there's like, I don't know, dead skin cells and and right. soap, or soap in their yeah. hair. Yeah, it didn't really bother me that much. And it was better than the absolute freak out. So I just um, like just thinking about that gave me a little bit of PTSD because <laughs> it was just such a thing. And yeah. and my kids were like, I've never been someone who, you know, I know we're both kind of similar that we don't like we're not big on hygiene. Is that the way we put it? No, it's just like <laughs> bathing in general and that kind of thing isn't like a huge deal for either no. of us, I don't mm-hmm. think. Um, but my kids were in the bath a lot because they liked being in the bath yes. and because we go to the beach a lot and there was just like, like being in the bath was like a fun thing for them. So there was a lot of bathing happening. And I think I felt, especially when the older ones were a little, like more pressure to wash their hair more often. Uh-huh. And then it probably kind of over the years, yeah, less and less and less. No, I, don't know. I, think, <laughs> I think it was very similar. We did a lot of daily baths when they were really tiny because it was part of the bedtime routine and it was something right. to do with them. And I distinctly remember my kids learning that if they lobbied hard, they could take a no wash hair bath. I don't know if I think uh-huh. they call it a non wash hair bath. Can we take a non wash hair bath? And I'd be like, oh yeah, fine. Just get in the tub. Um, so my first tip was going to be to wash your kid's hair less often than you think you need to. Like, unless yep. there's a, unless there's a hygienic or medical reason or whatever that you feel like you need to once or twice a week for little kids, I think has been fine for my kids. Um, my tween has oily hair now. Um, but even she is at three times a week, probably I wash my hair two or three times a week. So if you've been in a daily bath and wash hair routine when they're little, just give yourself permission to let that evolve. And it's it's not gross in my opinion. I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So the, the less often you have to do it, then you don't have to deal with all of that freaking out. Mine also freaked out. We did the same trick. So we did, um, I would let them hold a dry washcloth 
over their eyes. Um, we've lived in this house since Violet was 18 months and the bath has one of the handheld nozzle sprayers. Yes, those and, are so nice. Yes. And so that became, I mean, slightly more helpful, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, none of my kids like showers ever. And I know I always was envious of moms whose three and four year olds would hop in the shower or, or get in the shower with the grown up and just let them mm-hmm. quickly do. My kids did not like that water spraying down on them. Me, none, none of, of mine none, none did. Of, okay. I'm glad to hear you say that because none of mine did until the older ones. They were probably seven or eight. Violet got on board yep. with showers a little bit younger, maybe five. Um, but I was always envious of that. It just seemed so much easier, but it, we did yeah, baths I and I'm, I'm picturing myself like, leaning over it's like hard on your knees and your back yes and uh, I guess good and I remember like when we got back from the beach sometimes I'd run the shower and just be like can you guys just get it like this is really <laughs> I'm not asking you to take a full-on shower just get in the shower you're wearing like a sandy bathing suit like then you can strip in the shower it will save my floors and even that like they would do it but like only to where the water was like hitting their waist yeah. like none yes. of them liked showers yeah and can I just make a quick um I don't know like note here about the difference between little kids and older kids because yeah. I think that this is a common thread through every kind of parenting that we think there's something we have to do when they're little to make them like something later. Oh, that's such a good point. Like if only we could figure out the perfect strategy, like if we don't figure it out, they'll never be able to get their faces wet or like they'll never be able to take a shower. It's just not true. Like none of my kids loved getting their hair washed. Lots of them freaked out. Nothing I did really (laughs) changed that. It just made it easier on me and in the end, they all now independently shower. Yep. None of them are afraid to get their hair wet in the, you know, if they go swimming, they all go, they all dunk their heads under and everything else. It's just a phase. It's yeah. a stage. And you don't have to do anything about it, I guess is my point. Agreed. All you have to do is get through the day however you have to. Can we also just take a moment to celebrate how nice it is when you can tell your children to go shower and wash their hair, whether that comes at age nine or age six or age, like it's gonna, there will be yeah. a day. When not just one of your children, but maybe all of your children, where you can just go tell them to clean themselves and they will do it because it is so many years to get to get to yes. that point. I know. Um, and yeah. it is glorious. You can make dinner. You can listen to a yep. podcast. Um, OK, well, what about the brushing? Um, I uh, my girls both have very sensitive heads to being brushed mm-hmm. out. They both don't like it. I guess our tip has been lots of conditioner. Violet does shower independently now, but she likes me right outside the door in case like the temperature's wrong or whatever. So I'm, I'm hovering nearby, but not in there. And she tells me how much conditioner she uses for her little short bob of hair. And I'm like, oh, good grief. But it helps her. Then she's able to comb the tangles out herself. And I guess I've spent more on conditioner. So uh, a good conditioner and like a a good one for detangling and then using it liberally um, has helped us. We've had the wet brush, which is I, I, it's for me, it's never been about like the perfect brush. It's just about like, they, they have to know I have to get through the tangles yes. after we wash. And then I would prefer to get through them a couple more times throughout the week, but I, I didn't always do it. So we had like one of those like really soft brushes when their kids were super little and their hair was like baby hair, like fine yes. baby hair. The problem was that they wanted to keep using that yes. as their hair. And I'm like, well, this doesn't work anymore. This is only going like gliding over the top of your hair. And there's a lot going on underneath right okay, well I have to um, jump in I have a funny story about that um and in our outline I just wrote it down I couldn't remember what the girls called it but we had the same brush and they called it the careful brush which I always thought oh was so gosh. funny because it's me the brusher who was being careful it's right not, exactly not the brush so we had the same it was called the careful brush and they'd say please can you use the careful brush and I, I'm like no it, that doesn't that's a smoother I, I'll use it to smooth out your ponytail bumps but it does right. not do anything for the tangles that's so funny oh that's so funny yeah no very similar um Um, Clara really wanted me to just stick with that forever and the drama around brushing her hair, which she didn't want to cut. Like that was the other thing. Like she had a short ish Bob haircut when she was like four and was desperate to grow it out. And so it was like that constant every day, like, okay, but this is your choice. And if we're going to do this, like you have to, so it's, I will say her hair, even though she still has very long, thick hair, it has just gotten easier to care for. I don't know if She's just better at getting it started, at least, or if she doesn't roll around on her head as, you know, like when they would wake up in the morning and there's like knots because apparently Mm -hmm. they roll around in their sleep so much that it tangles their hair that much. Um, One thing that I did do during a particularly rough time with Clara's hair was I would brush her hair as it was being conditioned in the shower. Yeah, that's a good idea. So she'd be standing in the shower, condition it, and then literally brush the conditioner through something about 
the fact that the shower is hitting her head is almost like detangling as yep. it's happening. And then she's kind of distracted by the warmth on her head. And I just think it worked really nicely. And then just be really careful, like squeeze it out, wrap a towel really gently around it. Sometimes we could do that and it would never tangle back up. Yeah. No, that's and a- then we would just dry it right away and it would stay. Nice. Did you blow dry in her younger years? Um, we would sometimes do that because I found that when we blew, when we blow, bleh, blew it dry, uh-huh. I guess, as we were brushing it, it would stay less tangly. Whereas if we let it air dry, it would start to kind of like kink up and tangle while it was drying. Yes, like clump together. So, yeah. 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 I, uh, Allegra never blow dried again. I think she was probably afraid of a blow dryer till she was like four. It all goes back to the same theme. Um, plus I had two more little kids, so that wasn't going to work, but Violet blow dries mostly herself or she'll ask me to do it. And it really does help. I will say her tangles are so much better now than they were in the, Mm. in the fuzzy golden silk days it was yeah. so fine it just would you'd look at it wrong and it would tangle one thing i it did ball, it would like dig balls up yes, almost like yes. doll hair and, yeah in uh, the car seat you know the car seat on the back of the head and yeah um one thing i did with violet in terms of styling is i always her hair grows straight down in the front right in, like in her face almost like it would have been better if she had bangs but she didn't because it just grew straight down so i would pull that top part back in just a little tiny half pony not even a not even a half pony like just the bangs in and use a little rubber band. And I would let her sleep in that. It was, was comfortable to sleep in. And that would be her ponytail for like four days till we washed again. Mm. So then I didn't have to at least do a ponytail again and it would, she'd go off to preschool and it wouldn't be all in her face. And so, yeah, it was like a, it was a one and done for a while for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say also when I was a high schooler, I had a comb that I completely forgot about till we started talking <laughs> and it was like, it looked kind of like a big pick almost, but it had a handle on it, like a comb and the, and the, it was very wide tooth and the, the teeth like went, like they bent out a little bit and oh. then came back together. And that thing was amazing for detangling my hair. Like when I was a teenager, I remember that thinking that was so great. So I might grab one of those for Clara. Yeah. Actually. Sounds like a good, yeah. there's lots of good or... tools out there. Yeah. There yeah. are good tools. Um, before we take our break, anything that changed about haircuts for your boys in the little kid ages? Like, I mean, I'm thinking three, four, five, six years old. Was it just like, did you take them all at once, like for a while and get them all done? Yeah, I would take them all at once. Well, when the usually there was only two that were needing supervision, but also getting haircuts at the same time. And I do remember the last time I went with all four and had them all like lined up at great Aww. clips or wherever. And like um, that didn't happen a lot as they got older. Like they then their schedules were different. They all started having different preferences. Like my two oldest really wanted to go to a barbershop for a while. And so that became like I would drop them off together at the barbershop and go run an errand and come back oh, and get cute. them. And so but like um uh, they were all very similar. Like I remember everyone had like the same Caesar cut from mm-hmm. the time that they were. And it would be like, I knew the um, number on the clippers. I like, I could go in and kind of to give a little direction. And that was probably up until they were all, you know, four or five, like five, maybe five, uh-huh. six. And then they started to get opinions and that, you know, I know we're going to talk about yes. older kids and like letting <laughs> them have opinions about their hair, but um, definitely it was something where it, 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 it's gone terribly wrong at times, <laughs> but it's got some good stories. Yes. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. We will. We will dive into all that at the break. I don't have much to add about little kid haircuts, except that I only have one boy. So he's the only one who has chosen to be regular. And we've gone back and forth between the little kid haircut place, which we still frequent. And he likes it. Violet keeps her short. So she's there pretty often. Uh, or going with Brian to the grown up barber shop. And Reed likes both. Right. And he same just like your boys, he knows it's like two on the side, six on top. He's had the option to do something different. He just he's like a, a little man of routine. So right. um, I feel like the haircuts have been pretty easy. But again, I only have the one and like Allegra only cuts her hair like once a year. So it's a little different for each kid. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. 
Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, we're back. And one thing that we didn't get to uh, before the break was talking about styling our little kids' hair, especially the little ones, before they can do it themselves before school. And it occurred to me, Megan, that our your kids and my kids have relatively like wash and go hair textures, but that is right. not the case for everybody. So if you have right. very curly hair, um, parents of those kids have to, you know, learn to manage it and you can't just wake up and send them off to school. Well, and we talked recently, Sarah, that you were saying you had this kind of hang up about your kids not yeah, it was just in a recent episode yeah. about not having ponytails yeah. in their hair when yeah. they went to school. And I said, you know, in that episode, like there are days and Clara walks out and I'm like, your hair just doesn't look done to me. It just looks kind of lank and yeah. limp and whatever. Um, but I know my sister's kids are biracial and I've been there to help get them off to school before. And yeah. that is just not like a thing. Like leaving the school with like leaving for school with your hair just down just isn't right. like it must be done mm-hmm. in some way. And so I did learn how to use the little barrettes and the little like to do little twists. Like I was never very good at it. and I'm still not. I just think it's interesting, like with my with my kids, because their hair wasn't especially my daughter, like barrettes wouldn't even stay in. Mm -hmm. It became kind of like I'm just struggling against like the laws of physics right right now. Um, So that wash and go became kind of our standard. But just to acknowledge that I, I know not every parent can do that no like, definitely it's just not possible and curly yeah. we all we all like when we see a a child with really curly hair or any hair that's just like just it draws your eye to it and then you yeah. always there's behind that beautiful head of hair is a mom who's like yeah but we have yeah, to, but- <laughs> we have to condition we have to rewash and so yeah. yeah I guess we are speaking from a position of kind of uh straight haired kiddos who yep. <laughs> wash and go. Um, well, let's move on to the big kids and the teenagers. Uh, and I, I'm very curious for your perspective on how much parental opinion uh, continues to matter as kids get older yeah. with regard to haircuts and style. Do you have any big picture thoughts for us? Well, I mean, I've got a lot of kids and (laughs) I think at some point, particularly, and maybe this is not fair. I don't know, but particularly because the oldest four were boys. And so the world didn't care about their hair as much. I think I eased into the hair thing. Like if my oldest had been a girl, I may have been more um, controlling about hair for longer, but it was kind of the reverse for me. Like I started off with boys who nobody really cares what their hair looks like to a certain degree. And so I really took a pretty hands off, um, a pretty hands off approach to their color. Well, color is just what it is. My my boys aren't dying their hair. If they wanted to, I suppose I'd entertain the notion. They just have never asked. But like their cut and how they style it, I've really left that up to them, even though it has been downright goofy at times. And I've known it's goofy and everyone knows it's goofy. <laughs> and it's like I'll I'll try to make cons- some like constructive you know, suggestions like, well, have you ever thought about like trimming up the back a little bit more? I feel like maybe, and it's like, they, they just get in their head about how they want their hair to look and how they think it looks. Sometimes this, those two things don't go together. Um, at least one of my kids was trying to get the Bieber look back when, <laughs> remember when the Bieber fever and there's that, yeah. that long, you know, hank of hair coming down the front and then they, they would like whip it around. It's so funny when I'm dropping William off at school in the morning I and he's in high school I still see kids with doing that like they've got the long like this long bangy thing that goes yeah. across their hair and then I see them like jerking their head from side to side <laughs> to get it out of their eyes and I'm just laughing because I'm like oh honey oh honey but we all had that right yeah. like I came of age in the 90s like there was some hair there was happening some hair. wait so I have to ask you this how much of this is has all four have all four of the boys really been this opinionated or has there been any point where it was more apathy and like 
lack of opinion that led to a uh, like a a hairstyle that was more out of laziness or ha- have all it's of them been, been intentional? It's okay. been both. They've either been extremely intentional about their bad hair or <laughs> they've been so apath, not even apathetic, but like resistant to even wanting to sit in the chair. Yeah. And that, that was an older kid thing. Like when they were little, they all went. Cause I, we were going, like we were all in the car going someplace anyway. They didn't have any, they knew they didn't have any say. Yeah. So they just went along. But as they got older and kind of started to have more, I guess, agency over their own schedules and what they wanted to be doing, like sitting in a stylist chair for a couple of them, um, or I would say all of them at different phases, maybe, um, was just like a waste of their time. They didn't want to do it. They didn't see the point. They thought their hair was fine. And so like sometimes it was like really wanting this one look and it being a mistake, but that was their mistake to make. And sometimes it was them just not caring. Right. And then I would have to decide how long do I let this hair go before I force them. And usually it was when they started to look like no one took care of them. <laughs> and I would say this is making and I would just say to them, this makes me look bad. I'm sorry. Like yeah. you, you look like you don't have parents. So now <laughs> you have to have a haircut. Um, but I would let it go a yeah. while before I got to that point. Yeah. What about along the same lines? What types of things might you say if the issue was more? cleanliness or greasiness or lack of combing, like not so much the length and the style. Like are those little comments you make on the daily or like a big sit down, like you need to take better care. Like, uh, no, it's like your hair looks gross. Go take a shower. (laughs) I I find that in a house full of boys, um, mincing words around that kind of thing does not get you what you want because if they cared, they'd care. right? Right. So like it's, if they really cared, Um, if they were into girls, for example, it's amazing how suddenly when they've got their eyes on, you know, a a potential romantic interest, their interest in taking care of their hair suddenly like totally takes, you know, a 180. But before that, they don't, they don't care. And no matter how gently I put it, they're not going to care. It's more just like shower now. Right. You go get in the shower and they were never offended by it or like insulted or it's, it's amazing. The lack of, um, personal I don't know what, like what the word is I'm looking for here but just like they just didn't care yeah not all of them but a few yeah. well I guess to offer a different perspective from the the girl mom uh because I have an 11 year old who has the who developmentally is more like a 13 or 14 year old so just mm-hmm. started having greasier hair like a while ago um, yeah. And needing more regular and I have felt um like I wanted to be a little delicate about the way that I talked about it, like, yeah, you know, I, and maybe that's just me like wanting, not wanting to have self-esteem issues, but it, there's, it's such an interesting overlap between personal care and hygiene of which Mm -hmm. I think I still deserve a say. And it's still my job to be coaching and mentoring and like, but then also not wanting to be overly critical or like create a complex or whatever. And, um, Allegra's hair gets greasy in ways that mine, I always had a dry scalp and dry. So greasy was never my issue. Um, and sometimes even right after she'd wash and for a while, I just thought it was the hormones. I thought, Oh my gosh, this is like, and then I realized we realized, cause one time she washed her hair and it wasn't. And I was like, what did you do differently? And she said, Oh, well, I, I didn't put the conditioner right on top. So we've had, it has been an ongoing discussion where I have not felt like I could take the approach of like your head looks gross. Go take a shower. To right. Tweet, and I get that to for a sure. tween who like yeah. is dealing with all of these hormonal changes and all that. So um, she knows that. And, and I just usually say like it is it's a wash hair day. Like I can tell by looking yeah. at your hair that it's a wash hair day where I have stepped back is what I talked about in that um, things we've changed our minds about episode is I used to require a ponytail every day. And like we talked about, it, it just felt like you looked finished. It felt like tying your shoes or putting your jacket on. It was like the finishing touch. And, um, for middle school, I just decided that's no longer, I just don't care. So she does yeah. walk out the door. So style wise, I've pretty much completely stepped back. It looks stringy. A lot of the days it mm. looks unbrushed. Um, but where I step in is when it starts to look unclean and then I've yeah. kind of had to walk the line a little bit, I guess. Well, and you know, I, I'm, I'm being kind of, what's the word flip about it. I know that there's stages at my boy for the boys as well, where it'd be more like, um, Hey, when was the last time you washed your hair? (laughs) You know, it could use it or like, we need to be doing that a little more often. There's like gentle ways to say it, to kind of just make it not a big deal. I think for my kids, though, it would have been very embarrassing if I had had it be like this gentle, like come, you know, like let's come together moment to talk, like let's all talk about hygiene together. 
they're already getting that talk in school for one thing. So they know it's a thing. They just don't realize it's a thing for them. Right. Like or today. They just don't, yeah. <laughs> like those hormones today, like, you right, read like about. Literally right now. <laughs> those hormones yeah, you read about in that book I got you. Yes. Like that's yeah. happening on your head right now. They're, and it's they're here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Clara now is more interested in like coaching. Like she's more interested in me talking about her hair than like, because she doesn't love to wash it as many more than she has to. And it's long and I don't want her to feel like she has to, like, it's a big ordeal to wash and dry your hair. Um, but I will tell, like, there's just more, I guess, hands on like, oh, hey, what are you using on your hair? And have you been scrubbing the top of your head really mm-hmm. well? And like, you know, how often are you washing it? So we talk more about hair, Clara and I. Um, but I still sometimes will just say, hey, it looks like it's been a while. Go yeah. take care of that. And then she's usually pretty chipper about it. Is she, yeah, because I was going to say with Allegra, I think she would still not ever wash her hair if I didn't tell her. I mean, even though yeah. even though she wants, she has a desire to look nice and she understands mm-hmm. there's a there's a cause and effect in washing your hair and having hair that looks nice. But there's still, I mean, that's why they're tweens, right? They're still not right. like the, they're not internally motivated to go spend, a, you know, time washing their hair. So I definitely still am taking the the parental lead on that one. And another thing is that, you know, you said Allegra is developmentally beyond her years and Clara is developmentally a little, uh, what's the word behind mm-hmm. and not behind, but she's just definitely not like an early developer right. and she's obsessed mm-hmm. with puberty. So for <laughs> her, like anything that I can like nod to that makes her feel older uh-huh. actually is the opposite of being embarrassing to her. She's she loves like, she it. feels like she's in the club. She, Yes, she wants to stink. Like That's she really so wants funny. to need deodorant. She wants to have to shave. Like she's like very because she's always been a little bit petite for her age, and she's just mm-hmm. not. You know, she's not like getting breasts or anything. Like this is not happening yet. So I think for her, it's kind of almost like a badge of honor to have gross, greasy hair sometimes. Right. Yes. That's so yeah. funny. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we have to talk about bad haircuts. I mean, this is oh my gosh. This is a segment in and of itself. And I'm trying to think if I, I don't think I have any stories yet, just because of the nature of my kids, like one wears their hair long all the time. One is a boy who likes the same thing every time. So yeah. this is all you bad haircut. Oh, well, there's been so many bad haircuts in my house. Now I have to say, like, I got to a point with all of the boys where I would really let them, I would, we would, this is the conversation we'd go in. I'd say before we went into the hairstylist place, I'd say, do you know what you want to have done? And sometimes it was like, yeah, the same thing I had last time, or you tell them. And I'd be like, cool. And sometimes they had a very specific idea about what they wanted done. And I really wanted them to advocate for themselves like in the chair, Mm -hmm. because otherwise I know that you can end up talked into stuff that you don't want to do. So I'd say, well, if you need me, I'll come like I'll come over with you. But if you don't, I'll just sit over here and you can navigate that. And so uh, uh, I would say hairstylists have different skill levels in talking to kids or trusting kids. That's the other thing. Like lots of times they kind of be looking at me out of the corner of their eye. And I'm talking like 11, 12 year old kids. Yeah. Like these aren't babies. I say, he knows what he wants. Just give him what he wants. Like he's telling you exactly what he wants. See, so he's like making a motion with his hands right now. Or he's showing you a picture in a book, right? Like, um, and it was kind of like, they couldn't trust the kid enough. So they kind of got often these weird, almost like hybrid haircuts between what the kid was telling them they wanted and what the stylist really thought was good for them. That is so so true. That's so true of adults in general. I think not being used to kids. I mean, when I send my kids up to order something from a counter, it's amazing. The adults who will first of all, cut in line because they don't believe that a kid would actually be there to make a purchase. And then the people behind the counter, like, like you said, looking around for mom or whatever. So right. Yeah, you have to if you want your kids to be those self advocates, you kind of have to like really disappear or or yes. or somehow like uh, rig the system so that people take them seriously. It's a bummer. And I dropped my let's I'm trying to remember who it was. It was Jake. It was Isaac and Will. I dropped them off to get their hair cut um, a couple of years ago. So like Will would have been, you know, 13 and Isaac 17 or mm-hmm. something like that. And then I went the grocery store is right next to the haircut place. And so when I went when I went back in. The lady was like, can you next time come in and talk to me before you drop the kids off? Because I really want to make sure that like I'm giving them what you want. And I said, it, I would have told you nothing. And I, they're 13 and it's 17 years old. Parlor. It's, it's a haircut. And then I felt like are like you chastising me for being sort of like an, you know, and it was it was funny because it was like this obviously plenty old teenage brother with his younger teenage brother. Yeah. But the two of them are old enough yes. to have an opinion about their hair. And I don't care. And I just said to her, well, I would have told you I don't care. Like, literally, the conversation would have been ask them. And then I would have left to go get my groceries. So 
That is you know, a, anyway. That is a page right <laughs> out of uh, Jess Leahy's book and the How yes. to Raise an Adult that Julie Lithgott Hames. Like just like yeah. those anecdotal things that make you go, whoa, 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 whoa. Like yes. you weren't sending yes. four and six year olds in to get a tattoo. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it was it was a very strange moment. So um, anyway, they've had a lot of I would just say confused haircuts, <laughs> kind of like when I had short hair and for some reason. So many stylists assume that I wanted like the typical soccer mom cut. And I can, it's, it's the, I want to speak to the manager cut. It's like Mm -hmm. the big puffy, like spiky, lots of stuff going on. And I would say, no, I want it flat to my head. Like, I don't want my hair to puff. You keep trying to give it volume. I don't want volume. Like, what are you doing? And they just couldn't quite get it, get that. So the boys ended up with a lot of weird almost looked like seventies tennis player haircuts or something. I can't even really describe it. They all just looked wrong on their heads. <laughs> and it seemed to me like, you know, just cut the hair. It doesn't seem to be that big of a deal, right. but Clara has had very intentionally bad haircuts. Oh, I remember. Um, this. Well, one in particular. So one haircut I still think is adorable. She got a shag cut when she was like four years old. And it, I still think it is the cutest thing ever, but she won't look at pictures of herself <laughs> from that time. And it was in a particularly goofy stage. Like she's got this little elf face and like Uh it really highlighted like her big eyes and her like little pug nose. She looks like, um, like a, I mean this in the kindest possible way, like a cartoon character. Like she looks like an adorable, like Anna. Like she's anime or something. Yeah. Or anime. Yeah. Yeah. So she, but she had like, it really highlighted. And then her teeth were like, she didn't have any front teeth at the time. And so it was, I thought so cute. But when she looks back at pictures of herself, she just can't handle it. But then, (laughs) You know, so she grew her bangs out. That took forever. She had this long sort of just normal hair. And then one day she decided she wanted to look like Stephanie Tanner from Full House. And like, not just bangs. She wanted all of it because we were watching Full House. This is when she was, I think, eight. Mm -hmm. Um, She wanted the ringlet curls. Uh So basically she wanted a perm. Yeah. Right. She wanted the bangs that start like at the crown of your head, basically, Uh and then go all the way forward and are so layered and thick. You know what I'm talking about? So we finally take her in and actually John took her in to his like real stylist because I wasn't about to like trust great clips with that. No offense to great clips. I just didn't want a random person I'd never seen before um, at a walk in place. And she (laughs) John texts me and says, well, she took one look at herself in the mirror, said thank you to the stylist and walked out, like left the building. So (laughs) John is like paying and he's like, I don't think it went well. So she had gotten in the car and was crying Aww. because it turns out you can't make yourself look like Stephanie Tanner with a haircut. Yeah, like it, right. it doesn't work. She that was way. expecting like an actual transformation. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's such a lesson because yeah. haven't we all? Oh, I yeah. got the Rachel from Friends haircut and it did not make me look like um, Jennifer yeah. Aniston. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. And I did tell her, she's like, I thought it would be curly. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, no, see, that's a totally different thing. Yes. And eight, <laughs> that's curling it. Eight is such an age where they do have logical thinking and like can kind of plan out those things, but they're still missing. There's big gaps in their understanding of like how things work. So I can really yes. see how that age would be vulnerable to that. Yeah. Um, and we all have magical thinking around hair, yeah. but like <laughs> she, this was, you know, extreme. And the thing is too, like we didn't, we weren't really on board with it either. Like we talked to her about it for a month and said like, are you sure? Are you sure you want bangs? They're going to be really thick. Like, are you going to wear your hair half up? Cause that's the Stephanie Tanner thing. She has it half up with the bangs in front. I said, are you gonna do that every single day? And Clara was so like, yes, this Uh is what I want. She could not let it go. She had pictures on her phone, like screenshots. Oh my gosh. Um, She just had like a little, not even a phone. It's like an iPod. Uh Um, But she had screenshots of Stephanie Tanner on it and she would just show them to me Aww. every day it was pretty cute i guess well and but. she lived to tell the tale she she, she did and you know she learned a lesson um as you were talking i remembered i guess we have one only one really bad haircut and it was a true it was the stylist botch it was an actual mistake it was oh boy um, yeah violet had started wearing her hair in the cute bob which has been a great style for her um, and we went for a bob trim. So it's always like, you know, between chin and shoulders, like a long bob somewhere in there. And Violet has a real natural side part. So daily her hair is parted on the side. But when, you know, when they cut it, they part it in the middle so that it's even. And yeah. somewhere in the translation of that, I always try and show them like, look, here's how it's going to fall. But you can't cut it with a side part because things get uneven, blah, blah, blah. And 
somehow one side ended up, I mean, a full inch shorter than the other side. Like it was completely uneven. And I noticed it in the salon before we left. And I just, I had to nicely say something to the manager. It was at the kid's place. And she was like, oh my gosh. Okay. And she called over like (laughs) another stylist who was better and she, she (gasps) fixed it. But that Bob was like, earlobe. It was really, really, really short oh, by the time they, and it actually looked really cute. It was this time last year. Cause I was just looking at Christmas or pictures from Christmas last year. And the end result was not bad, which is why it didn't pop into my mind as a bad haircut, but it was actually a botched haircut that ended up in just a super short Bob, which looked totally cute. And Violet was not even sad, but I was like, uh, we have a, we have a situation over here. Like this is not, <laughs> we're not walking out like this. So anyway, Oh um, boy. What about, have you noticed like your kids caving to peer pressure or not caving, being, being influenced by their friend's hair in any way? I, this has not really come yeah. up for me. Well, to some degree, yeah. like I would say, interestingly, not, not Clara so much. She's just got long straight hair. Like that's just her thing. Like, I don't think she looks around and wants to get the style anybody else is getting for the boys. I would say it's more like a couple of them had, have tried to follow trends like I said to their like own. The yeah. And it, with varying levels of, of success and failure. Um, one thing that we're facing right now is that William joined the swim team. And to give some context, William's not like a diehard swimmer. He is the newest on the swim team and probably the worst. I, I haven't, <laughs> I don't, I haven't been to the meet yet. He's only had a couple and they've been away, but um, he told, he tells me he's slow and doesn't look at his time. Cause he doesn't want to know. Like he's really doing this for, to get in really good shape. And because his, a couple of his friends are on the team and he thought it'd be fun. So this isn't like his life, right? His a lot passion, of these, right. no. And a lot of these kids do this year round. So when they're not training or not on the team at school, they're doing private training and stuff like that. And I don't think that's going to be Will's life. Um, and over the last couple of years, he's grown his hair to like this long, I think you've seen pictures of mm-hmm. it. Um, it's long. It's like almost shoulder length. It's like very thick and full. And it, and it is the, the tradition to shave your head. And some kids shave their eyebrows at the end of the season, the swim oh season. Gosh. And he's like struggling because I think he wants to do the thing. Like he's very into the social stuff and he wants to be part of the team. And at the same time, he's not, it's like then for him, swimming is over for a year. It's not like he's going to yeah, then jump he is right not, in yeah. Yeah, 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 to another season or something. Right. So yeah. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. And he asks me every day. He's like, what do you think I should do? And I said, honey, I mean, it's up to you. Like, don't let, don't let something that just because everyone does it, like you feel like you have to do it. Yeah. But also don't let the fact that like, you feel like you might look a little goofy, not let you do something that you think would be really fun. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know where he's going to fall. When will we know? I have a feeling he'll do it on pins and needles about this. Um, I think that the season goes through like February. Oh, okay. I don't know. So it'll be a while. Okay. Uh Um, it's a winter sport. Yeah. Um, here. So, I think it'll be a while and I guess probably it's going to depend on how things go. Like if he really gets into it and feels like a lot of um, camaraderie, I think Will's the kind of kid, if he feels like he's in a club or like really Mm -hmm. in with everybody, he'll do it. And if he starts to feel like, like he didn't make the friends he wanted or starts to get disillusioned about it or something, he won't. So it'll be, and he's really going to care what girls think. (laughs) He's very, his girls are very much like, um, influential to central, him at the moment. Central so, to yes. his worldview. <laughs> Very central. Yes, exactly. Oh my gosh. So okay, well, it's will... stressing me out just thinking about it, to be honest. You only oh told me this gosh. 10 minutes ago and it's stressing me out. So February. Okay. We will have yeah. to update because yeah, I mean, on your Instagram, you can find Will and he does have long hair right now. So yes, this, would, and yes. this would be a big, a big change. Big change. Yep. Oh my gosh. Well, as we wrap, I made a very short list of milestones that you may not may or may not have encountered in your motherhood hair life. And I will list them briefly right now. And you can just tell me they are lice, kids cutting their own hair or a sibling's hair, and then gum, slime, or other substance or device like uh, matchbox (laughs) cars. No, like, you know, the spinny fans that they hold Uh anything, a foreign object getting stuck. So do you want a lightning round? Tell me whether you have encountered any of these yeah. three. <clears throat> Lice, no, thank the Lord. And I mean, I'm knocking all of the wood right now. Um, <laughs> has not been a thing for us. Kids cutting their own hair. Yes, each other's yes. And Clara ch- cut a chunk out of my hair once. <laughs> um, she's pretty horrified about that. Um, and as was I. And then my kids have had every kind of <laughs> substance. Gum, slime, putty, like silly putty. Uh-huh. Oh, clay. yeah. Clay. 
um, various weird other things, sticks and like burrs. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Brushes that have gotten so uh-huh. wound yes, up yes, in their yes. hair, they've gotten stuck like, yes, everything. And I, depending on how big of the chunk of hair that was affected, I would give it like one shot with peanut butter or ice cubes or whatever. And then it got cut off because I, well, yeah. So with my follow up was going to be did any of those or the, or the self cutting um, involve a, a haircut result that looked really bad and obvious or were they all like relatively subtle? I think they were all either relatively subtle mm-hmm. or the kid. Had enough hair at that time to like cover it up. It, yeah. I don't remember it ever being something where like everyone knew. Right. It's know, not like you this... have a long braid and like a kid lops off one. Half exactly. Yeah. No. Is no. that an Anna what about you? thing? I um, think it was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so we have had lice twice. I would say our cases have not been the, the crazy ones where you hear where it just keeps going around and around in the family. Like we have had it. I've gotten on it with the, our, you know, the combs and the treatment and it's been not as horrific as you hear about. And either that's mm. just because our cases weren't as bad or we caught it early or something. But yeah, we've had it a couple of times. Um, no, my kids have not cut their own hair or even doll's hair. I'm probably again, I should knock on all the woods because yeah. um, I feel like I would have encountered that by now. But no. And then I remember one slime instance that was really really bad because it was Allegra slime got in Violet's hair. She was probably three, but it was, it wasn't like at the end of long hair. It was like at the scalp level, Mm, like mm -hmm. on her head. And I I remember looking up YouTube videos and putting her in the sink and there was some, I think it was like Dawn dish soap or some weird thing. And we did, it was like, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. And then all of a sudden it started to work. And I was like, Oh, thank goodness. We're not going to have to shave this child's head. (laughs) Um, So that was that one. And then the other things getting stuck that I remember are those like the little battery operated spinny fans that come with like M&Ms inside them. And I still to this day when I see kids playing with those, I'm like, keep it away from the hair because once those things spin into a kid's hair. Now, I do think you can usually like get out of it without too much because they they tend to just grab a few pieces of hair. But it's still the kid freaks out. So it's, horrifying it's horrifying to watch. Yes. Yeah. So my gosh. Yeah. It makes me think of like, you know, getting caught in like some kind of machinery back in the old days. Yes, like, yes. like one of those stories. Yes. It's just going to end really badly like for fa- everybody. A factory yeah. accident. Yes. Exactly. I remember reading about those as a kid and being fascinated. Yes. It's fascinating, but horrifying. 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 <laughs> yes. Well, it is time to wrap up. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. First of all, next week is Christmas week and we have an episode because you all know we do not take breaks. We are going to air our regular Tuesday episode on Monday uh, just for kicks because Tuesday is uh, Christmas Eve. So you'll get our Tuesday episode a day early on Monday next week. And then if you haven't seen, um, we've announced it a couple places, but I have a new podcast with Allegra, my 11-year-old. It's called Kid Literate. It's a podcast for kids and families about finding great books and movies and music and podcasts and all kinds of media to listen to. They're short episodes and it comes out every other Monday. So it's not nearly as prolific a content as this show, but um, it would mean a lot to me personally if you want to check it out. And it's anywhere podcasts can be found. It is now on Spotify. You can ask your Alexa to play it. Um, And it's called Kid Literate. So go check that out. Okay, everybody, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. And as a reminder, we love it when you leave us reviews in Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to listen. It does help other moms find our show and it makes our day when we read those reviews and see the kind things you're saying about us. And sometimes we learn a little bit about how to make the show better too. Yes. So if you have not left us a review and we're wondering what to get us for Christmas, that is one way you can help the show and make us smile. So again, we'll be back with you on Monday, not Tuesday of next week with an all new episode. And we'll talk to you then. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. Hi, friends. Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Tea's Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage. 
on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made.